It's the next level. So Carly is radicalized, but there has to be a peaceful way to stop her. The desire to become a superhuman cannot be separated from supremacist ideals. Anyone with that serum is inherently on that path. She will not stop. She will escalate until you kill her. Or she kills you. Maybe you're wrong, Zemo. The serum never corrupted Steve. Touché. But there has never been another Steve Rogers, has there? Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about the third episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So if you haven't seen it, and we say this every time, <laughs> go back, watch it, come back, listen to us. And if you have any thoughts on what we have to say about the or the episode itself, you know, bring them back up to us in our uh, Facebook feed or our email. Absolutely. And then uh, we'll respond to that, whether it be a voice message or text version. And with that, we're going to just move right into it, which is The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Season 1, Episode 4, The Whole World is Watching. And the synopsis is John Walker loses patience with Sam and Bucky as they learn more about Carly Morgenthau. And yep. yep. <laughs> it very short and simple to the point. Yeah, yeah. Somebody's doing a good job with these IMDb uh, synopses now, not really giving much away and uh, just kind of giving you a simple, real quick bite. So, yeah, it, it's pretty cool though because it doesn't give you any spoilers when they, mm -hmm. when you read it. So you could just brush over and be like, "Oh, yeah. okay, I'll watch this later." <laughs> yeah, exactly. So initial thoughts. Do you have any initial thoughts? Well, I loved it. You know, once again, I, I was I wasn't sold on the show the first couple times I watched the first. You know, it took me two watches the first couple episodes, but now these last two episodes, they're just getting better and better. It seems like, and it's uh, really, really. I mean, this this one. Whoa, there was a lot of stuff in this one, and uh, I I can't wait for us to get into the discussion about it. Yeah, same here. I loved it, just like you were saying. Each episode is getting better and better. But not just like the action of it, but the story and everything that everybody's going through within it. You know, mm -hmm. not only do we get to see Sam and Bucky in their turmoil and working together and dealing with Zemo at this point, but we do get to see more from Battlestar and the new Cap, John Walker. Mm -hmm. And we you get to see his struggle in it, too, and with the outcome regarding that. Yeah, which is very hard, but yeah, it's it's getting better. And this originally was slated to be the first Marvel show on Disney Plus. It wasn't WandaVision originally, mm -hmm. so they really wanted to come out swinging with their their first show. So it kind of got switched around, and yeah. then now we got WandaVision first, which was really cool. And then we get this, and then we go right into Loki, which is... Yeah, and I can't, you know, I just realized you say that, we've only got two episodes left. Of this, ep yeah, of this of show, this, yeah. Of this show, yeah, that's crazy. I just, I, it just dawned on me just now, there's only two episodes left. Yeah, so it's only wow. a six-parter episode, mm -hmm. which is good, because WandaVision went to, what, nine? So... Yeah, I think it was nine, eight, eight or nine. They're, they're trying to keep them short, to the point, with a story, mm -hmm. and... I was looking at what you were writing and your thoughts, and I'm starting to agree. And I think it was based on what I was like speculating about Power Broker and everything too. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that because I think I'm starting to change. I'm starting to to change my tune on on Power Power Broker. Yeah, uh, but so we should move into our top fives or our highlights of uh, this episode. Absolutely, we should do something. Looking strong, John. Bucky. 
you want to go first? I went sure. first last time. Yeah, I thought I thought you, I was trying to remember. I thought you did go first, so I'll go first. Uh, and I think we have the same the same first one anyway. Really, is that flashback to mm. Wakanda and seeing how uh, you know the the kind of I, I guess what we, what we got was the culmination really of the deprogramming. They didn't show us the full deprogramming because he's just sitting there. She's using the words, and you can see it kind of flicker, but he he does know. He's like, yep, they're not working. Nothing's happening. I'm staying calm. And, you know, you got Io saying, well, I'll make sure you don't hurt anybody if, <laughs> you know, if, if it does come up. And, and so that was really great. I was, great. I was glad to see Io come back. Uh, and that whole uh, Dora Milaje, Mal- Mal- I got the, it's in, later in my notes, the Dora Milaje. Mal- 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 yeah. yeah. Like, okay. Do- yeah. Dora Milaje. <laughs> There, very good. <laughs> so yeah, it was really cool, and, and I want to go back and watch Black Panther again now, and, and get some more of that background. And and I still need to go back and rewatch Age of Ultron, you know, because a lot of it is all playing into this, and and even a little bit of WandaVision. So yeah, Age of Ultron played into WandaVision. Winter Soldier played more mm-hmm. into this, as yeah. well as a lot of the the Captain America lore, as well as well, you know, Civil War. You know, mm-hmm. that was a big one. Right. And, you know, because Zemo and everything. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I do agree with you with the my number five was seeing Bucky by the fire with Ao and how he was able to overcome the words that Hydra used to bring out the Winter Soldier in him. And mm-hmm. I thought it was so passionate. You see Sebastian Stan taking a different look at Bucky because he's always so stoic, mm-hmm. just hanging out in the wings, doing what he does. As Winter Soldier, he was kind of cut off and silenced and just attacked people. But with this, we saw a lot of heart, a lot of emotion from Sebastian Stan, and I really, really enjoyed it. It's showing depth to the character, as we saw when he met or we met up with Isaiah that time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, more more interaction like this shows more heart to the character and shows more development for that character. And I really enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, so my number four is you kind of already started talking about it a little bit with Sebastian Stan and, and Anthony Mackie, but just and I think we mentioned it almost every week. It's just the chemistry between these two guys is really, really good. And, and yeah. they the way they they play off of each other. And, you know, I, I love that when, when that fight scene came where the Wakandans were fighting uh, Cap and, <laughs> and Battlestar and he's like, should we break in? And they're like, no, no, give it a minute. You know, <laughs> and and uh, the rapport between them, between it's like, oh, do you need our help? Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. it's it's very it's very subtle. And there's there's a lot of, like I said, the, the whole back and forth with him is really great. When Cap calls, uh, says he's his partner, he's like, he's not my partner. You know, just very, <laughs> <laughs> just like, you know, uh, so it's really, really cool. I'm really glad we we got this show and uh, that we have these two actors working together because they really are really good. Yeah, that was, uh, my number four would be Carly and her crew showing sympathy sympathy to those that were affected by their attacks. Now, that's something we don't really get to see. So, mm-hmm. obviously, three are dead, and the others were hurt or injured. And, yeah. and I know that they're, quote-unquote, terrorists, but it shows a bit of sympathy because she knew that people were hurt and three died as a result of their actions. At least it shows some sort of sympathy within these characters that are doing these things. They're they're not out there to destroy or kill people. They're trying to make a point and a statement without hurting people. And I think really deep down that's what it means. Now, mind you, she did make a threat to Sam later on with his sister and his uh his nephew and niece, I guess. Mm-hmm. And about nephews, Nolan. I think it's I think it's two nephews. Two nephews, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and the fact that, you know, she makes that threat, but she kind of tries to play it off like, well, I just wanted to make a point, but not, I wouldn't hurt your family. Yeah, and I, I had, I think there's some sort of truth within that. <laughs> I think there's a complexity and I had, I had Carly in my notes as just her character, the complexity that we have. Cause last week when, when she blew up the building, uh, some of us, and I, I'll just, I'll, I'll include myself in there. I really lean more towards, Oh, okay. She's just evil. She's just a bad guy. But then this mm. week we get to see more deeper, you know? Um, and, and you're right. She did threaten the, the nephews and the sister, but then later she tells Sam, Oh no, I wasn't serious about that. I would never hurt them. Mm-hmm. Um, but but then you know she's she kills Hoskins 
Uh, and there was a, a bit of con- look of concern on her face. Yes. When, when I think happened. she just looked to injure him. I don't think she was looking to kill him. Right. Because and they wanted to kill Cap. So. Yeah. And uh, that, well, they wanted to stop them is what it was. Oh, no. She said she wanted to kill Captain America. Oh, she did. She, yeah. So but some people say <laughs> things out of anger and at that point. Yeah. I but. think now though, but it was funny because you know she sees she sees she's in the crowd when Cap kills her fellow uh, super soldier with his shield, and the, yes. but it's it's funny I put in my notes because nobody nobody sees her because she's got the typical you know she's got the Marvel cloak of visibility she's got her hoodie <laughs> up so nobody nobody knows it's her even though like she's right out there in broad daylight where they all should be able to see her in the crowd but nope she got the hoodie on she's good you know? <laughs> she's pulling a Luke Cage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jessica Jones, Luke Cage. Anybody who puts that hoodie up seems to just disappear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that brings us to my number three. Yes. Uh, just the more action that was in it. And I, I, I mentioned last week that there there wasn't much blood in last week's episode, but uh, I was listening to TV podcast industries and they corrected me that we did see blood when Selby got shot on yes, her chest. Yeah, yeah, so she there got was some chest. blood, but not a lot of blood. But this week, we had a lot of blood. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say shield. a lot. Yeah, well, on the shield. Lot, that, was, but... that was a big statement on the shield and mm-hmm. definitely coming out of Hoskins' mouth as he, uh, he was dying. Yeah. yeah, and it was it was funny because the action, like I said it last week, you know, if, oh, if they have one good fight scene an episode, I'll be happy for it. This one, we got like two or three, you know, good fight scenes in mm-hmm. this in this episode so it was really super cool uh to see that and and to go through that um and it, um, it wasn't on it wasn't until the second watch that i really started to notice the subtle things that the actor did who's playing john walker wyatt russell the the, the kind of subtle things he did before the reveal that he had taken the serum mm-hmm is you know he throws the shield and it sticks into that concrete wall mm-hmm. and then as he walks past to pull it out he's like he, his whole body is like trembling mm-hmm. and i didn't notice that until the second till the second watch and i was like oh that should have been a giveaway that he had taken the the serum mm-hmm. you know but of course then we see him fighting the super soldiers and we and it's just totally clear and Fal- even falcon can see it he's like what did you do and yeah uh, he knew exactly that. what he did and that's yeah. that that was a dead giveaway with the shield right i was like yep he took it yeah, but I, it, it just actually confirms though that he didn't have that in him before. Where we, I was speculating, well, is he secretly hiding it? Correct. Uh, but when yeah. he finds that one vial that Zemo wasn't able to destroy, mm-hmm. and he claims it for himself, and he goes into that turmoil, yeah, so of taking it and him talking to Lamar about it. Yeah, and I've got some more about those conversations in yeah. uh, further on down the down the way. But but yeah, it was it it is because I too I was in the same speculating thing of of maybe he already had the serum, but uh, of course now we know, and we can see that it's definitely affecting his aggression for sure. Mm, definitely, and it leads into my number three, which is basically John's arrogance and mm-hmm. is a need to he just pushes, he just goes in with full force if you think about it. Not mm-hmm. really thinking. And it's pretty much what Zemo states in the very beginning when they talk about the right person to take the serum and Cap was it. Mm-hmm. That was the real person to take it. And I don't think John Walker is. As a result, we do see that at the very end. And I think it was a foreshadowing when we got that, when Zemo had that conversation and when he talked about the serum. Mm-hmm. And, you know... And then him, his stopping Sam's conversation with Carly, which leads to that chase. I thought that was pretty cool because, mm-hmm. you know, she, you know, he, she goes, oh, I told you to come alone. You didn't come alone. Now I was <laughs> waiting at that point for him saying, here, he's my partner. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that didn't happen. I'm, I'm, yeah. I can't wait for that to happen at the very end. So at least yeah. they, they could come to that conclusion of like, all right, we're together. Right. Yeah. I hope, I hope so. It, it did. It took me a second to to realize and i think i did i realized on the first watch that when she says that and then sharon carter reveals that she's been tracking captain america we suddenly realize that the whole conversation with sam at that cough above that coffee house Mm -hmm. was just a ruse to get him separated from captain america so the other super soldiers could attack 
mm-hmm. Captain America. I it didn't it did I put that together late in the first episode, but I was like, wow, that's really clever, a clever way. Cause she did that's what she said earlier. She said, We're gonna separate them and then you know, we'll kill Cap. So mm. and that leads kind of right into my number two, which was Zemo smashing all the the super serum, you know, just one of them kind of rolling away. Um, and, and that heightening of Walker's aggression that we've already seen throughout. Um, but wouldn't technically wouldn't Bucky be a successful use of I, I mean, I know it was a different serum that Bucky had, mm-hmm. and it took him, he had to be deprogrammed and everything, but wouldn't he technically be a successful super soldier? He would, of, yeah, he would be deemed a, a successful I, one, but utilized by Hydra as the Winter Soldier. Right, right. He but hasn't now, become like Cap, you know, right. like Captain America himself. So he hasn't been yeah. like Steve. Right, but it just, it just was, it just bothered me that that Zemo was saying, "Oh, there's no, there's not been anyone," you know, and then Sam corrected him and go, "Well, Steve, you know," and also Sam knows about Isaiah. Which Zemo doesn't know about Isaiah, so he didn't want to reveal that. But mm-hmm. we know that Isaiah also looks like he's at least, you know, been able to handle it. He's not out murdering people, as yeah. far as we know. You know, it, it slowed his aging to some degree. He still mm-hmm. retains all that strength and ability. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, we already saw it in that one episode, but his mind is degrading. Yeah, I mean, and he's definitely got some thing anger that, issues. But. Uh, yeah, and his mind is slowly going based on age. So yeah. it makes you wonder if the, you know these people having this ability at this point over years, they'll, they'll become a threat to people hmm. in time. We'll see. Yeah. My number two. Yes. The fight scene between uh, the Dormelage and Flag Smashers and John and Battlestar. And nice. of course, you know, you got Bucky and, and <laughs> Sam <laughs> just watching you know, them going all together at once. And, yeah. you know, and the fact that, you know, there's like, oh, you want our help? You want our help? It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the scene was really good. It's the action that we've been wanting within the show. And plus that end scene with the fight with the Flag Smashers, John Walker, Lamar Hoskins, Bucky and Sam. But, you know, obviously we get that you know, bad ending with the mm-hmm. Battlestar losing his life. Mm-hmm. And my correlation to that is Cap lost Bucky and still did the right things. His heart mm-hmm. was in the right place. He had a conscience. He had, when they were tapping Cap or Steve Rogers to be the Captain America or the super soldier, they looked at his personality, what made it him the best qualities at that time. The doctor picked him out particularly Mm-hmm. Be based on that that observation. Yeah. They weren't looking for somebody who was great at what they do just to have good spirit and good thought and good heart. Whereas with John Walker, he has all those glories as being a soldier and, you know, loves that. And then, of course, you know, he gets his ass beat by, you know, the Dormelage and he's killing himself over it mm-hmm. because he, it, you know, he's a good soldier, yes, but... He showed no humility, and Cap always showed humility. But, you know, showing humility shows that, yes, you could be the best, but you could always be, you could always lose. And Mm -hmm. with him, it's always about winning. Yeah. And they had that conversation between him and Lamar about taking, you know, and it's a good scene with them where he -hmm. struggles with the idea of taking it because Lamar doesn't know that he has it. Yeah, And he takes the formula and he gets that super soldier serum in his system. And think about it. I'm not pointing him as a hero because they did kill Hoskins. But what would Cap do in that case? Would he put the shield down and not do anything and show remorse or sympathy to the person or just arrest him or what have you? But it's very a human thing. It's like his anger got the best of him and he just like just kills that flag smasher Mm -hmm. and it makes you think what would cap do yeah well and everybody had their phones out so you know that's going to go viral and everybody's going to know yes what captain america did and he's going to have to either explain it or something you know because you can't be the symbol like you're saying if if you're going to be the symbol of everything good and right but then also this was the guy the guy he killed was the one that told carly you know this isn't it's not all good and bad anymore heroes can't 
heroes are going to have to get their hands dirty a little mm. bit. He was actually calling Carly Captain America because because of what she was doing, his thought. And so it was kind of, yeah, it was a, yeah, it just, yeah, it's just bringing up a lot of a lot of things. Yeah, it's very, uh, they're making the character not only being hated, but also sympathetic when it comes to John Walker now. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. I can see that. So, yeah. um, so that leads us to my number one. And we've already kind of hinted at it because we've already been kind of talking around it. But it was really cool that Sam, you know, Sam and Zemo have this conversation where Zemo asks him, you know, would you take the super soldier serum? And Sam says no very quickly. And Zemo is like, that's interesting that you wouldn't take it. And and but then later, like you said, we have this same almost identical conversation between Lamar and Walker where Lamar is like, hell yeah, I'd take it. You know, you imagine <laughs> how, what we could have done in Afghanistan, if we'd had that serum, how many lives we could have saved and, and all that. And so it just, it just was interesting to see that and how, you know, he says something like all the things we had to do in Afghanistan that weren't, it, it almost, it was definitely some sort of black ops kind of things, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And that the things that he did to, earn those medals he's not proud of is the kind of the impression i got and uh but he does you know lamar is the one that says power only brings out who you are and he kind of tells walker well you're captain america so you'd be, you'd be able to handle it and i think that may have given him you know the, the kind of i don't want to say the idea but would have given him the the strength to to take it but now we're seeing that he doesn't have it in him mm -hmm. You know, yeah, very much like I was yeah. saying, it's a reflection mm -hmm. of like what Steve right. was. Right. And pretty much if you think about it, that is why Steve gave Sam the shield because he saw within Sam himself. Mm -hmm. He and, saw all the goodness in there. Correct. And, and so I think, yeah. Yeah. And I, that's why I didn't go to Bucky because Bucky hasn't been around all that time. For most, mm -hmm. most of his years, he's been frozen, wakened, made the Winter Soldier, put on these missions. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until Ao wound up working with him in Wakanda and getting rid of all that Winter Soldier manipulation within him, but it showed sympathy in his actions when mm -hmm. he was the Winter Soldier. He he had memories of that that they came through, and you saw that within that scene. That's why he was crying, because a lot of people died, and he affected a lot of people. Now, mind you. Would Bucky take it away right away? No, because he's still developing as a character, still developing as a person who has to deal with all this. Mm -hmm. And it, it it's really, really interesting. They they really give depth to these characters. And yeah, yeah, and they we've been getting a lot for the out, uh, you know, obviously like WandaVision, we didn't get like forty eight to fifty minutes worth of a show. We only got like maybe thirty five to forty at most. So I, I really enjoy that. Yep. And my number one, well, I, it just continues on from what I was saying before, that ending scene when John kills the Flag Smasher. And mm -hmm. I just thought it was so violent. But to see the blood on the shield at the very end, so yeah. symbolic of what mm -hmm. was going on. Now it's going to paint John Walker in a bad way. Now, is he going to go run and hide and wear a different costume? to hide away from people that are after him because I'm pretty sure the world's government are going to be coming after him in some way or they're going to have to do a lot of media prevention, you know? Yeah, I, we'll see. I think I think they're going to find a way to try to spin it. I really do because he's, you know, acting as a soldier. He's he's fighting these terrorists. Mm -hmm. I think I think they're going to try to find a way to spin it. I don't think he's going to go on. He might, though. You never know. The only time that we ever saw something like that with the shield was at the end fight scene with uh, Tony and Steve at the mm. end of Civil War, where Steve almost pummeled the crap out of Tony, mm -hmm. but he stopped. Yeah. And he walked away and dropped the shield. Mm -hmm. But that was because of their own individual arguments based upon what was going on. And that was about Bucky, too, for the fact that Tony was ready to kill Bucky at that point. He wanted to take him out. Yeah. And we've got a bunch of notes. Yeah. Uh, a few notes we haven't talked about yet. Let me see. Um, Zemo, the conversation at the beginning uh, between Zemo and Sam about him shooting Nagel. I laughed every time when, when he's like, we, we don't have time to litigate it now. And, and Sam's like, I got the quote uh, down below what Sam says to him about litigation, but uh, it just was, was funny that, 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 even though we all saw him just shoot him right in the face, 
that uh, he's still like, well, you know, you you gotta you gotta think about what happened there and and maybe look at it differently and <laughs> so. Um, and then I, I love Sam's kind of explanation when he's talking about Carly and it kind of shows how he does, does have some sympathy and for Carly. Cause he's like, look, these people were, they lost their jobs. They lost the homes that they had been given because half the population was gone. And suddenly that the half of the population is back. And now you're suddenly go from being, you know, an important person who's got a job and got a home and you're living on the streets or you're living in these refugee camps because you're back to being homeless you know, and mm. they they had those five years of of you know the, the world's borders being open, you know, people everybody helping each other out because all the countries had lost half their population, you know, and so everybody it was the whole world. It sounded like even though Sam was gone as well, he's he's looked into it and he knows that gosh, you know, the world really came together for those five years to try to make things work and now suddenly when the population comes back it's it's all back to the way it was before and these flag smashers don't like that hmm. um and then we started to talk about it a little bit um so we can get into it now we've already kind of talked about carly carly but uh i'm i'm now with you i think it might have been your suggestion last week uh, more leaning towards sharon carter could be the power broker Hmm. You know, she's got a lot of influence there in Madripoor. She's got access to these satellites. She's tracking people. You know, it looked like she was in some sort of room. And yeah, so I'm I'm now kind of getting on board of Sharon Carter might be the power broker. <laughs> well, it's kind of, we mentioned it last week when we talked about that rapport or how, you know, Sam was saying how he would help her, help her, help her. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a... a a quid pro quo kind of situation. She's like, Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. mm, sounds a little bit strange and fishy to me. So, and the fact, like you stated, you know, she's got access to all these satellites. She was able to track cap mm -hmm. and obviously the power broker we saw, and it goes into my note about how the power broker winds up sending that message to the flag smashers mm -hmm. and that, what was it? A text message or something? Yeah. And the guy had it on his phone or something. Yeah. So, so think about it. She's able to triangulate and get into their phones. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised, you know, and that she has changed so much, but mm -hmm. you know, she's utilizing this location. Uh, what's the name of it? Mora. Madripoor. 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 Yeah. So she had, had been living there all this time, building up and using her, her influence of what she mm -hmm. can do. And, you know, obviously a little bit corrupted. So I, I wouldn't put it past it being Sharon. Yeah. Uh, one, the first one I would have would be during the fight, Ao was able to take Bucky's arm off quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. And it was a shock to Bucky too. Yeah. And... Also, Ayo's uh, ability to outfight John Walker and gets his shield stuck within the spear on the table and he's yeah. struggling. And that, that was one of his downfalls. He couldn't beat them. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, the that group that that uh, Black Panther put together to protect mm -hmm. him and his kingdom and everything. They're yeah. really good. Yeah. And yeah, they, they and weren't that, even enhanced. <laughs> yeah, that, that that shield flip where she flips it with her foot right up onto her arm was 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 pretty pretty cool. So <laughs> Yeah, the Dora Milage, they're, they're really good. Yeah. Um Oh, well, I think I went through all of them. The only one I would have left would be uh Zima's song that he sings at the park <laughs> in front of the kids. That was an interesting little tune that he was singing. Yeah, Ba Ba Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full. Yeah. 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 All right. We uh, got... So we got a couple of quotes here. Yep. Um, so that, that the first one I got is that one I already kind of talked about with, with Sam where he says, there's nothing to litigate. You sh you straight up shot the man. <laughs> and I, I think I have that wrong. I think he did say shot the man in the face, I think. Yeah, I think so. I, I have to go back and rewatch it. But... Um, first one, well... Yeah, the first one I would be from Zemo, and it's a whole conversation, but Zemo starts off saying, the desire to be a superhuman cannot be separated from a supremacist's ideal or ideals. Anyone that that serum is inherently on, that has that serum is inherently on that path. Uh, she will not stop and escalate to kill her or she kills you. 
Mm. Oh, you to kill her or she kills you. Basically, once they take it, they're going to just do whatever they need to to get their their your th- their things done. And then regarding, yeah, that was regarding Carly from Flag Smashers. And then mm-hmm. Bucky stating, wrong Zemo, that never happened to Steve Rogers. And Zemo turns around and says, there has not been a super soldier since Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of deep. But yeah. the, the description of the desire to be a superhuman cannot be separated from a supremacist's ideals. Yeah. It shows that people that have that need, very similar to John Walker and mm-hmm. him taking the serum and his needs, you know? Yeah. And that we already saw what the downfall with that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then my second one is, is I just have the two is, is the dorm when he says they don't have any jurisdiction um, in Latvia, she says the dorm lodge jurisdiction, have jurisdiction wherever the dorm lodge find themselves to be. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very. And it's, it, it comes from that culture too. We've seen mm-hmm. it before with, uh, within all different Wakandans uh, when we got, mm-hmm. uh, who was it that was protecting Black Panther. I forget, but she, she's always like that. Yeah. Uh, next, last one I would have be from Carly herself saying, you're just a tool for the regimes I'm trying to destroy. At least you don't hide behind a shield. And that was Carly to Sam when they have their meetup mm-hmm. and regarding John Walker. And it means that there's a bit of respect there, I think. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think she she's, uh, she's, yeah, got she understands the honorable miss of sam correct all right well uh had no feedback this week Uh, i have no news we're just going to skip our podcast recommendations and youtube recommendations so we'll move (laughs) into uh feedback well for feedback that we have all the normal places that you can bring us feedback Uh, obviously if you're listening to this you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice we're on if there's a ability to give us a review on there please do so it will notify us and we would definitely appreciate that on whatever platform you're listening to us we have a website which is panels to pixels podcast.com we have a facebook page which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels uh we have an email address panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels to pixels one the to in the middle and then the number one at gmail.com we also have a youtube page which is panels to pixels podcast you can go there you can subscribe to us there and you can uh give us a thumbs up next week next week we will be back with further discussion on the next episode the the penultimate episode it's already here of the falcon of the winter soldier Mm -hmm. and uh, of course mark and jamie will continue to discuss the next episode of invincible as well yeah and that's coming along great yeah they're fun uh between these two shows and actually i mentioned something within our podcast with jamie regarding falcon and the winter soldier nice and how you know the difference between the both and Mm -hmm. they're pretty much the same within comics yeah so where else can listeners hear us? Well, I can be heard right here on Panels to Pixels podcast, as always. But I also can be heard on Adrenaline Cinema podcast and the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. So there we cover action films, adventure films, suspense films, fantasy, what have you. Next up, uh, next episode will be Face Off with Ben and I. And then after that will be Jerry and I covering Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger. Oh. So we're trying to move into a little bit more fantasy. So just to give that aspect, because those are action packed, and that was yeah. a Ray Harryhausen cool movie that I love. Yeah, and Jerry mm. loved it. Very cool. Um, so me, I can be heard on. Uh, I send various voicemails to different podcasts that are, are friends. Um, Fear the Walking Dead is back. I yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk about that show. Um, <laughs> But uh, so you can hear my voice on on those. I send voicemails of my commentary to Lost Revisited uh, to that podcast as well. So you can hear me there. And uh, of course, whenever I have the chance to co-host or guest with anybody, I'm always excited to do that. Awesome. So, well, that was pretty much our show this week. I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels. And we'll see you on the next panel. Have a week. Yeah, see ya.